This is lesson nine in the Tin Man project. And before we get started building the foot, I just wanted to clean up a couple things in the outliner and group them properly. This is important when we start uh, moving the pivot points around to pose the character. Go ahead and keep that leg bot left as a group. And in there, it should have the two rivet groups, the knee joint and the pole should be included in there. And the leg top is that thigh piece that we created that goes clear up into the pelvis area, as well as that small little pole that we copied from this one down here. That's just a duplicate and moved up. So I've grouped it in here and called that leg top left. And we can close those. And I'm now going to, um, well, we'll do it after we make the foot. So once we complete the foot, we'll group everything together and call that leg left. And we'll mirror it over or actually duplicate special it over. And that will be our right leg. And for the pelvis area, that's the pelvis piece that we created. And we broke it up into a couple different pieces. There's the center piece and the ring on top. And those are all grouped together under the pelvis. And uh, I made a couple little changes on here. Just share those with you. So uh, this was the piece that I corrected. I didn't like the, the lines going through there, uh, creating the uh, kind of uneven surfaces. I also inserted an edge loop through the center of this horizontally and use that to create a curve. You can see that in the front there, how it's a little bit more narrow in center. So that's the insert I did right there. And I also created uh, a little bit of a recessed area, just extruding the faces inside here. It's kind of a standard view there. So uh, it was just a small detail. Uh, I thought it kind of helped the area out a little bit. And I did go ahead and quad off this piece right here since I uh, ended up not liking those little flaps that came off of that center piece that went around here. I ended up deleting those faces and that left me with a gap right here. So I went back and filled the hole on there. And as you can see from the inside, I just quadded that off. All right. So with all that done, uh, let's go ahead and get started on the foot and do that with a sphere. And we'll just bring that up to center here. And we'll go ahead and close down the outliner. Let's try something like 12 and maybe eight that way. And we're gonna rotate it over like this. So 90 degrees in Z. And we'll position that under here. So from our front view, we can line it up. That center line right there. We're going to take off all the bottom faces. So we'll do that from here. So I'm just dragging a marquee on the bottom and deleting that. That leaves us with the top part of the sphere. And we'll scale that up. Move it down into place here. Scale it up until it kind of fits. I'm going to scale it a little bit in the y-axis so it's a little bit narrower. I don't want it crossing this uh, center line right here. Okay, now that we've got that, and kind of check out the shape from the center here. Let's grab the vertices in the front part of the shoe and drag them out to here. as well as these. And we'll pull this group kind of down like that and angle it. And this group, pull that in. I'm dragging marquees around everything. I don't want to not get the ones on the other side. This is probably sticking up just a little too high. Pull this group down just a little bit more. Same thing here. I had this uh, up here before when I modeled it. Uh, I think it would probably look a little bit nicer if it were back here. It's going to create a little bit more of a heel area. So let's come back out here. And we're going to 
double click on the bottom edge. We're going to create a lip on there, kind of the heel. So if that's selected, let's extrude that out. Let's pull it out first. Extrude again and drop that down. And extrude again and we'll push that in. Extrude again. We'll center that and just bring it in like that. Yep. Let's try inserting an edge loop right here and then we're going to have to connect it down. Uh, it's not going to cut across these triangles here. So let's uh, use the split polygon tool. This is actually called, uh, in Maya 2012, it's got a new name here. It's the interactive split tool. So I'm kind of using the old 2011 name still. And we'll drop that right about there and hit enter. Okay. So I think I'm going to delete the edge here. And I'm going to continue kind of drawing this across here. And we'll go ahead and bring it down to the bottom here and enter. Okay, and then delete this edge right here. So we've still got a little uh, problem here. I think uh, what I needed to do was probably leave this one in place here. Let's just put that back and delete these edges right here. So let's go ahead and delete that one and that one. And just kind of reposition this vertice right here. Okay, I'm going to grab this group here. Drag it up like that. Okay, and let's grab these faces here. So just drag a marquee and we'll just deselect the ones underneath. And go ahead and extrude that. Push it in. And I'm just going to hit R on the keyboard. We're going to scale that in, W, and then kind of push it in a little bit. So it's a little recessed. Let's go ahead and scale it down just a little bit more. Okay, so we've got some extra faces out here that we need to delete. So I'm just going to select those and delete them. Deleting these. Okay, and then we'll reattach these right here. So I'm going to uh, snap the vertices to this point right here. Pop on that. It's kind of a problem with the, that's a clipping plane problem right there. So I'm going to hold down the V key. You can see that that changes the manipulator right there. I'm going to grab the center one and uh, I hardly even had to move that. It snapped up to the other vertice. It's going to snap to the closest one there. Same thing here, V on the keyboard. I'm going to snap that into place. And this one here. Same thing as well. So that kind of pulled those up a little bit and we need to merge them now. So we have to drag a marquee around the two of them and merge them. Merge those, and these here as well. All right, so it should look like that, a little indent happening. And we can actually take these faces here, probably do something similar here where we um, just going to delete these faces here, take these two and push them back. And then we can merge the vertices. Okay, so let's merge those. Let's merge these. And this group right here. So we've got a little little triangle that we created right here. Let's fix that by drawing in another loop right here. Uh, we'll correct that in just a second. It needs to actually go all the way around. And I'm going to grab these vertices here and merge them. So that cleans that area up right there. And let's do the same right here. So I'm clicking it on this edge, just dropping it down. 
selecting vertex and merging those. All right. So let's send an edge loop around here. It's only going to go part way. It's not going to complete the entire loop. And then we will just connect it. The split poly tool. There and there. Okay, so that kind of cleans things up a little bit. Insert an edge loop right here, just to kind of hold that in place as well. Let's hit three on the keyboard. Take a look at that. Okay, it looks like a little bit of a clamshell. We'll quad that off in just a second there. All right. And we need a couple more edge loops. Uh, we need one going around here to keep our heel edge in place and one here on the bottom as well and there so let's hit three on the keyboard and take a look at that uh, it sent one up over here uh, I'm not real not real happy with that um, I'm gonna actually take that out it was that one right there so let's uh, fix that so it doesn't go all the way around that way. It's, um, it's following this uh, edge right here, edge flow straight up. Okay, so to correct that, I'm going to just drop that in here. I think that took care of it. All right. Let's try three on our keyboard again. Q to end the process and take a look there. All right. Got a little bit of a um, area right here that's probably a little bit more recessed than it needs to be. So I'm just going to move it up slightly, kind of round it out. Maybe drag these over here a little bit like that. Okay, so we're going to split this in half right now. So I'm going to select faces. I'm just grabbing everything on the left side, deleting it. This is so we don't have to repeat the process we just did. And under Mesh, Mirror Geometry, Option Box, this is going to be negative X, and they're going to merge the vertices. And this is a common problem that happens right here when you have a lot of uh, very close edges like that. You'll see them collapse together into one point. That's very easy to fix. If you come over Inputs, under the Channel Box Editor, click on the last thing we just did, which is the Poly Mirror 2. And under Merge Threshold, instead of 0.1, make it 0.01. And that should correct the problem right there. Okay, all right, that looks good. So we've got that on both sides now. And uh, I don't think we're going to see the bottom. I'm not going to worry about this uh, face missing right here. We'll just insert an edge loop on there, hold it together. Okay, and that is our foot piece. So we need to create a connection that uh, attaches it to the leg. And um, I'm thinking it's going to look something a little bit like the wrist. So let's uh, duplicate that, Control-D, and move that down. We'll have to move this piece out of the arm group and down here to the leg group, leg bottom. So we're going to rotate that this way. So it's back to 90 on it. And we'll scale it down so it fits inside there. Undo that for a second. So I just noticed that these are not scaled uniformly right here, so I'm just going to drag uh, and pull down here on the channels and put in 0.5 to correct that, uh, to correct the wrist. I think the wrist was the problem there with mine. 
And then I'll just drag it from the center, make sure it's uniform. And this piece does not have that little indentation. Let's go ahead and create that real quick. With offset edge loop tool. So I'll make it about that wide. Q on the keyboard. We'll grab some faces here. We're probably going to um, duplicate this one and take it back up and replace the wrist just so we don't have to redo this couple of steps here. All right, so with those selected, let's extrude that, push it in, hit one on the keyboard, see it a little bit better. Okay, and we'll insert our edge loops here and one there. All right, three on the keyboard. Cue to end that process. Okay, that looks better. So we'll come in here and grab this hole, control D, and drag that down. Pellet comes through on the bottom here, and we'll have to size it up a little bit. And it's a little off center. Actually, the top piece is a little bit off center. So our front view, line everything up. We've got this one right here. Let's just pull it over. That's the ankle joint. And let's just make sure that is sitting in there right. That looks good. Okay. Uh, you may want to grab some of the faces here and just kind of uh, maybe recess an area on the shoe and pull that and scale that pull down in there. So indentation like that. Insert some edge loops. So one here on the top, another one right there, and that process. Grab this pole right here and scale it in Y and kind of move it down into position. All right, that looks a little bit more interesting. Select the shoe and hit three on the keyboard. So there's our foot and let's go ahead and combine everything in the outliner and duplicate it over. We'll have our legs complete. So we have this arm piece right here that joint five, we need to drag and drop that into the leg bottom. Just call that uh, ankle. And I think everything else is in place there. So we've got our two leg groups. I've selected them both and I'm gonna group them with control G. Double click on that group and call it leg left. And we forgot the shoe in there. <laughs> There's our shoe. Let's double click on that and just say shoe. Drag that into our leg group right there. Uh, it should be part of the bottom of the leg, so I'm going to drop it into that group. Make sure it's right there. Okay. So we've got our entire leg selected, so we're going to duplicate special. Close this right here, and we've got it already set up. It should be negative one in scale X, and we'll just duplicate that over. So now we have our two legs that are complete. And next we're gonna move on to finishing the arm.